Who is driving the San Francisco 49ers bus? We know it's John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, but as far as the roster goes, defensive line, is it Nick Bosa? Or has it been Jimmy G this whole time? Let's talk about it. 49ers defensive line, how important is it? And looking ahead to this season with the team's best, in our humble opinion, unit coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers. Your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. Thanks for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day, and man, we're doing it every day in the off season too. That's what separates us, Croc, from uh, a lot of folks out there. Five fifth episode of the week. We're talking defensive line, looking ahead to this position group going into the season, and I think we might be able to find some some really good roster battles, better battles than we were talking yesterday with the with the running back position with the defensive line edge rushers interior defensive linemen crock we talked a couple of weeks ago about we went through every position group on the roster what's the best position on the 49ers roster and it's really not a surprise with all the resources put into the defensive line that this was the best unit on the roster and who's really driving the bus of this football team because uh, qb wins get all the credit right crock and uh, yeah. off the air a little bit we were just talking was i was like you know what is Nick Bosa's record with the 49ers? I wonder if it's better than Jimmy Garoppolo's record with the 49ers because both of Jimmy G's full healthy season, Super Bowl, NFC Championship, both of Bosa's healthy seasons with the 49ers, Super Bowl, NFC Championship, right? So I think there's some correlation there. When Nick Bosa showed up, the 49ers were good. The 49ers had the second pick in the draft. They were the second worst team in the NFL. Then they went to the Super Bowl after drafting Nick Bosa. Crazy, huh? Oh. Like to think about it that way. And, and not just second pick overall. Like they didn't trade up for that second pick. Like last year, traded up to yeah. pick th third overall. They were legitimately the number two overall picking team, although they did have injuries, which kind of skewed that a little bit. Almost like the Dallas Cowboys some years ago when they drafted Ezekiel Elliott. It's like, hey, this is not a true uh, team picking fourth overall. Like, they're not that bad of a team. They're missing Des Bryant most of that year, missing Tony Romo most of that year. And then next thing you know, they hit strike gold on uh, Dak Prescott in the fourth round. They get Ezekiel Elliott. He runs crazy. And they win 13 games that year. Yeah. You know what's crazy? It's kind of, you know, it, I think the ultimate of that is you got to go to the NBA with the Spurs, right? Wasn't David Robinson hurt for an entire yeah. year? Then they, they got, got Tim Duncan, Duncan, and all of a sudden you got Robinson and Duncan, you're dominating for decades. You know, another thing that what it reminds me of, and I hear this a lot, and I heard this about even the 2019 49ers, it's, oh, they're not, they're not a player away, right? And maybe not one player away, but maybe there's two players or so that can really make a huge difference in the outcome of a season. And again, I talked about with the Dallas Cowboys, I think that holds true with the 49ers as well, because heading into that year, it was, oh, they don't need to make any drastic changes or drastic signings because oh, they're not one player away. And now I'm all, I just think, what, what does that even mean? What does it mean to be one player away? The Cincinnati Bengals, I think they have a good conversation for that as well. Last year, heading into this season, I'm assuming most people felt like they were one of the worst teams in the uh, NFL. And all of a sudden, you get a Jamar Chase, you get a healthy Joe Burrow. They still have no offensive line. And, oh, they're in the Super Bowl. And they have a chance to actually win it. You know, so I always throw that. I hear people say that one, one, they're not one player away. And I'm like, man, I don't even know what that means anymore. I, I think everybody is one player away. The, you're, you're one you're one big impact away, I think, is what it is. Because the 49ers also added D Ford that year. Um, and... They were their defense was just in shambles, and obviously, in, we're looking at what Bosa's record was. So Bosa, Bosa as a 49er, when he's healthy, the team is basically wins 
68 and a half percent of their games, which is almost identical to Jimmy Garoppolo's record. Jimmy Garoppolo and, and Bosa have won a lot of games together in those two years where they were both healthy in, in 2021 and in 2019. They both were hurt. I think we could throw Debo Samuel in that as well. Debo was a part of it, right? Yeah, Debo's had fewer healthy games because he was dinged up a little bit more in 2019 for the Super Bowl year and wasn't as impactful as Bosa was. I think he only missed one game. He missed one game in 19. I feel like he was limited a lot, though, wasn't he? Or was it just training uh... him? There was a game, I think Arizona, he left like midway through the game, maybe kind of I'm, banged yeah. up a little bit. I think no, maybe he came back that game because he kind of went crazy with the sideline, toe tap, bobbling, bobbling the ball. Yeah, I think he just missed one game and it was just a little weird. Yeah, I think I'm just thinking more about 2020. Yeah. Where he had the, the injury in the offseason and then, you know, the whole season was kind of funky that year. But yeah, it's, it's you know, you're, you're kind of, you kind of are one draft away as long as it's impact positions and quarterback defensive end your top playmaker on offense those are those are impact positions we've seen that with the 49ers and the defense i've talked about it before the defense was non-functional before the defensive line really became the strength of the team and then as bosa shows up d ford shows up deforce buckner plays better all three of those guys are playing better and eric armstead all of a sudden has a, a you know his career year as well sack total wise you know so it's like all this stuff works together and that is a nightmare for opposing offenses. And that's what the 49ers are hoping to do right now. One more note on Nick Bosa. Everyone knows how good he is. I don't think we have to talk a lot about him and how he leads the, the team, whether or not he's actually driving the bus of the whole thing or not. ESPN's uh, series of lists that are coming out right now that, that everybody is talking about with uh, NFL executives that are polled and voted on the best players at all the position groups. Nick Bosa came in third. He only He came in behind only... TJ Watt and Miles Garrett, as far as edge defenders, one spot ahead of his brother, Joey. So the, the league really respects the difference that Nick Bosa makes uh, when he's on the field. And uh, yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. The third edge player in the league already. And it's going to be hard because TJ Watt and especially Miles Garrett are certified freaks. So I don't know if Nick Bosa will ever be able to overtake those guys. But the fact he's already the third best edge rusher in the league, according to league executives, is it's pretty impressive. And who would have thought with T.J. Watt, right? Like, that was the guy who was raw coming out of college. And, you know, people weren't sure if he could put his hand in the dirt and rush the passer and had to learn pass rush moves. And I think what we learned from that is, man, don't sleep on those Watt boys. I know there's another one that's like a fullback or something. Yeah, but, yeah. And I think he plays for the Steelers as well. Yeah, he's on the Steelers roster. Yeah, he's a fullback. He plays some special teams, I think. But, you know, it's harder to make an impact there. But, uh, you know, he's a tryhard guy. <laughs> right. right? And right. the, and he'll work his butt off. So and I think that's key. Really, T.J. Watt and Nick Bosa not only being little brothers of also very impactful NFL players. Uh, so it's in their blood, but technique wise and, and motor. And it's so important for edge rushers that motor getting a lot of second effort sacks. And you see that. So they have the burst off the line of scrimmage. They're blessed with talent and they're maximizing the talent they get with how hard they work. You see what their bodies look like when they come into training camp. Right. Nick Bosa is going to have the half shirt on here in a in about a week and a half when uh, when everyone reports to camp, and the the technique and just the the nonstop effort it's it's really important for every position in the NFL and uh, especially so for those pass rushers. So the 49ers got a special one and he's he's a really important player for the current roster, but they've got some other talent as well. You, you talked about T.J. Watt real quick. I I was like you know what let me look at his stats because you know he is considered one of the best edge rushers in all of the nfl he was number one according to nfl executives i was looking at his stats too with williamson we were breaking down the defensive <laughs> list there from espn his numbers are crazy yeah that's pretty damn consistent like because sacks it can you can have like a bunch of sacks one year but then kind of fall off i think we saw that with uh vic beasley for the atlanta falcons where he had like one huge year and outside of that it's just been like nobody really wants him <laughs> as their edge rusher right. yeah. but and even this really run edge rushers, really good edge rushers you have a year where you have those man 16 sacks big year but then the next year nine and a half sacks you know which is good but you know it just fluctuates a lot but when i was looking at miles garrett who's the number two on the list miles garrett's almost got you know I, I think a little bit less than a sack per game over the course of his career they're both drafted in 2017 in the same year and TJ Watts got like an entire season's worth of sacks more than Miles Garrett. And Miles Garrett's yeah. a freak and one of the best in the league. He, he's getting after it. Thir uh, 13 in 2018, 14 and a half in 19, 15 in 20, 
and 22 and a half in 2021. He's getting after the quarterback. Yeah, and I do feel like every time I watch the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, like he gets a sack every time yeah. I watch him. I mean, he's got over sack a game. It's crazy. It's in 22 and a half. That's getting after it at the at the highest level that's ever been done. Right. That's that's record sack production right there. It's pretty crazy. So is he just better than Nick Bosa? Like, would you say that? I he think, also has four interceptions as well. I think he has length and speed that Bosa just doesn't have because Bosa is kind of a stubby rusher that really the only, the only thing you could say about Nick Bosa is that he doesn't run a four or five like miles Garrett. And he doesn't have really long arms like Garrett and TJ Watt and Chandler Jones and some of the top edge rushers in the NFL. He's a little shorter. Yeah. So that's have you, so maybe he can't get to that, that level just because he doesn't have the, the freaky length. When I watch Nick Bosa, sometimes I do wonder like, how is he winning? I know I know he wins with technique, but when you're just watching him, it looks so funny because it's like you see him engaged, the next thing you know, you see him just pass the offensive tackle. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you do that? Like, like, uh, like Von Miller, it was clear, right? Like Von Miller is like choom, firing off the edge, dip that shoulder, rip. He's around the quarterback's legs really quick. And, you know, some guys you see them just bull those guys, but Nick Bosa is just super consistent too, just and, he, and I feel like he does it and doesn't say anything because he's just like such a quiet, like calm mannered person. But it's just hands on. Then he just does something with his hands and he's passed the offensive tackle. And it's, I actually laugh sometimes just watching because I'm like, man, this dude is hella good. And I don't know how. I know it's his technique, but to win over and over and over that way is, is really wild because in the NFL, it, it is the freaks of all freaks. And those left tackles are freakish and he makes them look like little boys. Yeah, it's crazy. He's so quick and powerful with those hand movements. It's just like boom, boom. It's like Bruce Lee out there. Like, <laughs> like, it's kind of like Debo Samuel, how we were talking about how it's magic when he was taking the ball in the backfield and he's right. getting the corner every time. How is he doing it? It doesn't even – it looks fake almost when you're watching. Yeah. It happen. And Bosa is the, the defensive version of that. There was a, a good kind of stretch of Debo Samuel having those type of touchdowns, especially carrying the ball where it's like, okay, Debo to the left. Damn, he scored. Like, you know, it's like, how do you do that? Yeah, he's so good at staying in, getting the corner, and then coming back and then making more moves. I mean, he's amazing. He's the best guy after the catch of the ball in his hands in the yeah. NFL. Well, um, what's your forward. argument for people that, and I heard this about Lamar Jackson as well, but Debo Samuel, and maybe you can uh, answer this on the other side, but Debo Samuel, pure receiver versus just football mm -hmm. player, right? Where they'll say, oh, he's yeah. a top 10 uh football player but not a top 10 receiver like what the hell does that even mean the dude plays receiver yeah that's a really good question okay let's address that question next we got to talk about the rest of the defensive line some of the roster battles on the defensive line for the 49ers what we think this thing is going to look like when they break training camp coming up next but first we got to let the folks out there know about built bar tons of great flavors at built.com including the newest which is coconut brownie chunk They've got this, the the old-fashioned Built Bar in the coconut brownie chunk flavor, and they've also got the coconut brownie chunk puffs. We're talking about uh, deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness. And you can stop drooling and listen because this is not just a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. This is a low-calorie, low-sugar, high-protein treat, and it is all delicious coconut brownie chunk puffs it's a long name uh, but it's worth the time there and they're only there for a limited time at built.com so you want to act fast and don't miss out if you don't like brownies or you don't like coconut or you don't like puffs you can find a ton of other flavors at built.com or get a mixed box if you're not sure what you want there all built bars are made with collagen protein which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You do not have to sacrifice. Just go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Thanks again, everybody, for making Locked on 49ers your first listen. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Find out starting July 18th, Monday. Locked on gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available July 18th on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts, and on YouTube. And Croc and I might make an appearance there uh, talking about those 49ers that might be on that top 50 list, but we can't spoil it. You're going to have to find it on Locked On NFL. 
that is something that we've heard a lot this offseason. People are making lists. People are talking about players. The the Debo argument, I think, is even easier than the Lamar Jackson argument. They're both actually pretty easy. But the response to that is Debo was a 1,400-yard receiver, too. The running back stuff was extra. Right. Dude wins. And I just think it's going to take time to people realize how good of a receiver Debo Samuel is. Different offense, different style of thrower, I think will help. If we see more of those breakaway touchdowns to Debo down the field, like we saw with uh, Trey Lance buying time, rolling out, throwing across the field, right, to the deep over or whatever the route ended up being with uh, with Debo Samuel. And, and he houses it. If he gets more of those, plus the run after the catch stuff, it's crazy. I mean, he's so good. I have these arguments with people where I'll hear them talk about their top 10 receivers and it's like, oh, Debo is not a top 10 receiver because he doesn't do, and I'm like, what did he do average 18 yards? He led the NFL in yards per reception. He led the NFL in yards per reception. Like they talk about, oh, he's a running back and whatever he is, he led the NFL in yards per reception. He leads the NFL in yards after the catch. I mean, he does all these special things. He has a 1400 yard receiver. He has a thousand yard receiver halfway through the season. And his numbers just kind of got, you know, but listen, this is what people do all the time, and they do it with George Kittle as well. Because George Kittle blocks so well, and then because he has Kyle Shanahan, he can't be a good route runner. That's what people, oh, no, he's a great run blocker, but he's not a great pass-catching receiver. And it's like, what the hell are y'all talking about? Yeah, this it's dude like- that runs legit routes. He's one of the most fluid Titans in the league and he's explosive out of the breaks and then he catches the ball and it's just his run after catch is just is special but don't knock him for that I think they're doing that with Debo Samuel as well you even get this with the Randy Moss versus Jerry Rice stuff because yeah. the youngsters who see Randy Moss play they want players to win in a certain way and Debo gets knocked for this um and I think George Kittle sometimes because he's not the the basketball rebounder type of tight end in the red zone maybe um Jerry Rice doesn't have the same highlights winning just with ease down the field like Randy Moss. And they think that for some reason he's not as good, but there's so many aspects to playing these positions in the NFL and you got to count all of them. And so running after the catch is one of them getting open, catching the ball. Debo Samuel does all those things. It's fine. He may, it maybe doesn't look like Randy Moss, but it's dominating the way that he wins and he doesn't have to be a running back to win that way either. And with Lamar Jackson, it's the same thing. It just doesn't look the same, but you've got to value what he's doing at the quarterback position. Look what he's done in his career, the the number of wins he's gotten in his career, the you know, MVP, the like ask it's funny because they asked executives on the ESPN list with the quarterbacks, and and Lamar Jackson was one of the snubs, right? On that list, but they didn't ask ask defensive coordinators. Right. Go ask a defensive coordinator if you'd rather play against Dak or Lamar Jackson. They'd probably rather play against Dak. Right, 100%. Nobody wants to play against the 49ers defensive line, though. That is for sure. Uh, Looking at this defensive line, is there a breakout season coming for Javon Kinlaw? I think that's really what's going to make or break how good this defensive line is and maybe how good the defense is this year. Up the middle is really where the questions are in the 49ers defense. You know, strong safety and um, not linebacker, but, you know, it knows tackle with Javon Kinlaw, you know, interior offensive line, quarterback. We don't know exactly how those positions are going to turn out this year. I think it's really key how good Javon Kinlaw is. Obviously, staying healthy is number one, but he has some development and technique development to do as well. We just talked about how important the technique was for Nick Bosa. Javon Kinlaw was the opposite end of the spectrum coming in. All the ability, just the size and sheer strength and the way he could move at that size, but the technique wasn't there, and he hasn't been able to get on the field to develop that technique. Yeah, K- Kinlaw, man, it's 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 just a knee, and that's the one thing that kind of worries me. And now I'm almost at the point where I'm like, man, whatever you get from him, like that's good. But he was the 14th overall pick. You do have to play at a certain level, or you expect him to play at a certain level. Can he at the very least be a serviceable two-down uh, defensive player? And he's replacing DJ Jones, who if they play him more in that DJ Jones role, who was a kind of more of a two-down player, but still gave you like some pass rush production. But DJ Jones was a top three run defender in the NFL. You know, so, you know, just replacing that type of production, you talk about trying to get better in the middle, that, that's not a small task. And one, they're definitely going to need Ken Law uh, healthy. But maybe having him focus more on that, like, hey, we want you to be just the best run defender in the NFL. 
and a lot of that's just using your size, your strength, clogging up holes, make sure you're, you know, you're, 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 uh, taking up the right uh, spaces in there, you know, plugging up the right gaps, taking on double teams, be that. We'll worry about the pass rush stuff as we continue with your development. But I think giving him something to, to focus more so on than just being like, hey, you got to be a great run defender and you got to be this terrific pass rusher. I, I, I think you're kind of setting him up for failure. So uh, big task to improve over DJ Jones, who pl played very well. I want to say Kinlaw's up for it because he has all the talent, right? Like, this is a big, freakish athlete at the defensive tackle position. Now it's just keeping him healthy so he can really kind of showcase that. That's a good point. Just play sound. You don't even have to do the extra stuff. Just be sound in your assignments and destroy those dudes in front of you and stay in the gap, you know? Don't get that. Don't do that. Because there was a couple of plays where Kinlaw would be, like, out of position and then, you know, a, a smaller – much less strong person was rooting him out of a hole and all of a sudden it's a wide open gate for the for the running back so just be sound and the extra stuff will come later well they have other guys that they can kind of rotate in there at more of a three tech type position or in that interior and get pass rush production we, we saw that we saw that last year yeah right and you they, know there was no ken law and dj jones getting two down player like who was rushing on third downs it was uh uh gosh the guy arden key right key, arden yeah. key was a guy like he would inside. come in and he would run from the inside and stuff like that. Can they get some of that production out of some of these other guys? Uh, not named Jay Jackson. He's definitely going to be rushing from the outside. But uh, Jordan Willis or, you know, Mo Hurst. Can they get some production out of him uh, as a pass rusher? Uh, I feel like they're leaving somebody off of this list right now that I'm looking at. But, you know, you got Hassan Ridgeway. There's somebody specific. Uh, the guy from that we traded for from the Texans. Oh, and Menahu. And, yeah, and Menahu. I don't see his name on his depth chart, but... A minute who and Kerry Hyder could both give you some inside, you know, outside in versatility. Right. So, you know, you it's like, all right, like Ken Long, we just need you to be a two down player. And if you progress throughout the year and, and get improve as a pass rusher, great. If you don't, we're, we're fine. We have depth. We have guys that can do what uh, we eventually want you to do as a as pass rusher from the interior. I was surprised. You mentioned DJ Jones. The the 2021 49ers well represented on that list of best defensive linemen according to league executives. DJ Jones was actually mentioned as the honorable mention, and Eric Armstead was in the top 10 of defensive tackles. He's actually number eight on the list of defensive tackles. So even though his you know sack production hasn't been huge since 2019, um, he's getting recognized around the league for how good he is. So I was actually surprised to use, I was surprised to see both of those names on the list. And so Eric Armstead, you know, um, I think he's been more of a, a production or a, a, a disruption equals production guy, more than pure sacks, more disruptive. Uh, but, you know, if we can get home a couple extra times and, you know, finding a home now on the inter interior, the defensive line, uh, I, I think that's an exciting unit. And the question becomes who's going to be that edge on the other side, we know it's not going to be D Ford. His name's on the roster, but D Ford's done as a 49er. But rookie Drake Jackson, Samson Abukam. Let's talk a little bit more about the edge rushers, Kamoko Ture as well, who was brought in in free agency. And then the roster battle for the bottom of the defensive line roster next, Croc. But we got to let the folks first know about Bet Online. Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can bet on how many sacks. Nick Bosa is going to get next year. You can bet on the 49ers to win the Super Bowl. You can bet on Trey Lance for MVP. Kyle Shanahan for coach of the year. Uh, tons of NFL futures, odds, and props at Bet Online. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news as well, not just wagering at Bet Online. Major League Baseball all summer long. Got MMA, sports, celebrity boxing, golf. Get over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action at Bet Online, which remains the best spot for all your sports scores, news this season, live betting, esports, and more. Go to Bet Online, where the game starts. Okay, Croc, I left off with a little question that I didn't let you answer yet. Uh, who's who's going to be the fourth defensive? If you know, if healthy, it's Bosa, Kinlaw, Armstead. Who's going to be the other guy? Samson Abelcom came on strong at the end of the year. They drafted in the second round with their first pick, Drake Jackson, out of USC. Uh, Kamoko Ture, by all reports, it looked pretty good in spring practices. They they signed him as a free agent. Uh, I kind of love the three-headed monster, and to be honest with you, I don't care who's out there first. I care who's out there on third down and keep these guys fresh and just keep rotating. It might be the answer. 
Yeah, I I think you're you're spot on there. Keep them fresh. Keep rotating. Definitely want to see. Uh, gosh, why am I blinking on his name right now? Uh, Ebicam. He, he was a guy who definitely turned it on down the stretch, and a lot of guys did. You know, you were talking about Eric Armstead before we went to break, and when you look at his pass rush numbers, his sacks, his pressures, his QB hits for the first nine games, as opposed to the second nine games, including the playoffs. It is a drastic difference, drastic difference in this production. So I think a big part of it is what Armstead, what version of Armstead are you going to get? Are you going to get that second half uh, Armstead? If you do, that's big. And I'd assume if you looked at a similar spit, uh, p- split, excuse me, Ebicam, his second half split would probably look a lot different oh, as well. Yes. He turned it on. He started getting better. So are we going to get that version of him? Because if so, if you have any combination of Ebicam and Drake Jackson, alone like I, I think that'll be good right if Drake Jackson just come in and be that guy off the edge and then you throw in a guy like uh Ture as well I think 49ers are kind of cooking a little bit in the middle who that's a guy I don't want to sleep on because I just keep seeing them say things about just how jacked he is how pumped he is to really get after after being in this system for a year and it, it feels like he's a guy that's working out. You'll probably hear him say something along the lines of, I'm in the best shape of my life. All right. <laughs> but, but we, you know, we typically hear that during the off seasons. But I think the 49ers got a good thing going on that D-line. He's shaped similarly to, you know, young Eric Armstead. So I think he could play some outside in role there. And that would be valuable because the depth is much deeper on the edge right now for the 49ers especially after free agency in the draft than it is in the interior because after Kinlaw and Armstead on the interior, you got Hassan Ridgeway who they signed as a free agent, Kevin Givens, Mo Hurst, and that's about it as the guys who are pure interior defensive linemen, uh, Kalia Davis and, and uh, undrafted free agent Kevin Atkins were brought in. I don't know if you can expect much from those guys as late draft late round picks or undrafted free agents and Clea Davis might be on the the pra- or the pup list to start because he got that injury from from college he's dealing with as well so I don't know if you should expect a lot there so they might need some versatility from some of those guys and moving them around and getting Kerry Hyder inside getting Charles Amenehu inside um, and I think even the second round pick Drake Jackson maybe you know you get really excited about him we were excited about him after the draft I, I don't think you should start plugging him right away in as the starter especially after some spring reports Let's see what he is first and let him earn that. And I, I do really think it's going to be a rotation there with a lot of guys after, you know, I mean, even with Kinlaw, you probably, even if he's healthy, you probably don't want to put a full load on his plate either. So really it's Bosa, Armstead, and just rotate the hell out of everybody else. Right. But let, let's say, all right, let's take Drake Jackson out the picture, right? Okay. He's a, he's a rookie. Don't know exactly what you're getting. How comfortable are you though with Ture and Ebucam being that, situational pass rusher uh i'm pretty comfortable i'm comfortable because they didn't go into the season with like cool we're done we got able common we're good i love that so they brought in teray they brought in drake jackson i don't know which one of those guys like teray i'm i'm more excited about teray now than i was samson Abelcom last year and i'm more excited about drake jackson what he could be than Abelcom last year Abelcom started slow ended the season pretty well so i love the competition there and let's see what these guys end up looking like but i love that they 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 know they have a stud on one side and they didn't have a first round pick they didn't they didn't have a lot of money to spend in free agency on a stud defensive end although i thought for a minute they might have been uh messing around with someone like chandler jones to bring him in but they they didn't end up signing anybody big but they did bring in Ture and um, you know, then you have a mini who and, and Kerry Hyder that can then play on the outside. And of course, Jordan Willis as well, who's probably going to make the team just based on some goodwill that he earned in the, in the playoffs on special teams. And obviously special teams is important. It was a, it was a, a really a key component of the 49ers off season. So I just love that they brought in a lot of competition there and they didn't try to just, you know, say, ah, oh, we got this one guy and he's going to be okay. No, there, there there's going to be a lot of bodies and, and some competition. And I love that. I'm probably a little bit more worried about the interior than, uh, the edge guys. Do you think that there's a chance that maybe Ebucam doesn't make this roster? Because I think there's potential there for him to be a cap casualty. So if you do have Drake Jackson, he hits the ground and is like, man, we love what we're seeing. He preseason, he's flying off the edge. It's like, all right, I think we got our third down edge rusher, as well as having some depth with guys like Ture, who's a lot cheaper. And then you look at the contract of Seb- Samson Ebucam. And, I mean, you want as many good players as possible. And, again, the way he finished down the stretch, it's like, yeah, that's a good football player. There's this one rep where um, I saw someone posted, it was Eric Armstead winning with a bull rush against 
uh, Green Bay Packers in the divisional round playoff game. And you just see Armstead just walk to the guard right into Armstead's lap. But I'm like, man, I'm looking at this guy rushing off the left end of the offensive line, and he destroys that tackle. And it was Ebukam. Ebukam was more of a, an off-ball linebacker, too, with the Rams, kind of a tweener right. guy. And I saw some workout videos of his recently. He's jacked. He's getting bigger and stronger. And he, I, yeah, I think he was already a pretty strong guy, sort of a weight room guy. So I, I think that's one of the keys for him. He knows he needs to have a little bit more speed to power coming off the edge. And now he's got a full season of just playing as an edge player. So he, he could be really dynamite. I don't know what to expect, but you could also get six and a half million dollars in cap space if you were to cut him. So um, that's going to be one to watch because there's a numbers crunch and, sh you know, someone's going to get hurt. I'm sure. So they're going to need all these guys eventually. There's no reason to do anything with them now. But I think if he doesn't, if he's not the top guy, maybe they do decide that he, they can't carry that number and they, they want to get a little cap space for yeah, him. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't carry that number. If, you know, and again, it, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal right now, but heading into next offseason, when obviously, you, you know, you're starting to pay guys more. You know, Debo Samuel, I'm assuming he'd have a contract by then, but you still want some cap relief. Uh, Nick Bosa, he's going to be demanding maybe, I mean, top defensive end money. There, there's a scenario where he's the highest paid defensive player ever, at least for a short period of time, right? Like where when he signs his contract, he could be the highest paid player ever, and then maybe somebody follows up behind him and gets paid a little bit more. But, you know, to five and a half million dollars, like <laughs> that's huge for next season. If he's not, if he's not undoubtedly – like the guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to be the first guy in the rotation. I think, I think that's one of the keys for him. And, you know, he's got Tere and Drake Jackson breathing down his neck and they're deep there. And so you start looking at the numbers and even if Kalia Davis starts on the pup list, you've got the undrafted free agent, like Kevin Atkins on the practice squad. You don't even have to talk about them yet. You still got 12 guys to, to figure out which 10 are going to make the roster. And usually they keep about 10 defensive linemen. So you got Bosa, Kinlaw, Armstead, uh, you got Abelcom, Tere, Jackson. That's already seven. Hassan Ridgeway at defensive tackle. That's eight that I think you feel pretty good about. Amenehu makes nine. Then you got Hyder would be 10. Then you still have Kevin Givens, Hurst, and Jordan Willis. Right? And you only pick one of them if you're keeping And Jordan them. Willis is a good special teamer. Right. So maybe he's as safe as anybody. So uh, the, two of those names I just mentioned aren't going to make the roster unless they can sneak some, but I don't like, they're not practice squad guys. Right. So um, unless there's injuries again, I'm going to name the names. This is 12 names, not counting Kalia Davis who might not, you know, I think they just would stash him on the pup list. Probably the smart thing to do there because they know they have the numbers crunch. Kevin Atkins, undrafted free agent rookie. So not even counting those guys. Cause that makes 14. You've got Nick Bosa, Javon Kinlaw, Eric Armstead, Samson, Abacom, Kamoko Ture, Hassan Ridgeway, Kerry Hyder, Drake Jackson, Charles Aminahu, Kevin Givens, Maurice Hurst, Jordan Willis, Alex Barrett. 13. You got to cut three of those yeah. guys. Who do you cut, Croc? Maybe, Alex, maybe Alex you can Barrett, keep 11. Is, there, maybe keep 11. Barrett's pretty easy. You still got to cut one of Jordan Willis. Is his special teams value enough? Is he going to give you enough on defense? Um, I think for a team that is prioritizing special teams heading into this year, Jordan Willis is a guy that they are going to take a long look at and lean towards keeping a guy because he is like a, a big time athlete with as big as he is. I've talked about why I sucked on special teams. And part of the reason why is because when I'm back there and I have to block on kickoff return, I got Jordan Willis who's 6'4", 270 pounds and ran a 4'5", running full speed at you know, 6'2", 200 pounds. Like, come on, man. That's not fair. So that, that's the kind of guy you, you want those, those type of playing, mismatches. You didn't have 6'4", 275, running 4'5", playing against you at Monticello. No. Hell okay. no. Right? So, <laughs> You're talking about Jets. so that's actually the big difference, right? You go from Monticello to Jets training camp, you're like, wait a second. I, that dude's going to be on special teams? I got Mark Hughes? <laughs> yeah. And I will say, I don't want to... We there were a lot of D1 bounce backs in my conference when I chose my the school I was going to play at. A lot of it was the, you know the competition, and I was in the Gulf South Conference, and it was elite in the sense of talent 
and some of the guys I played against. They they had some freakish guys, but you still didn't see like six four, six five running, you know, four five running full speed at you. Like those are guys that get drafted high, and Jordan Willis definitely did. Okay, so if if Willis is safe for you, you have to cut two guys: Hurst, Givens, Amenahu, or Hyder. Two of those have to get cut. Now think about this. Ooh. Interior defensive line depth. Like a minute who and Hyder could have some versatility to play inside, but are they full time defensive tackles? Because right now, Kinlaw, Armstead, Ridgeway, Givens, Hurst, that's five. Those are the only five every down defensive tackle types that the 49ers have going into camp, not counting the rookies. Well, I feel like I only need four of those guys. I think I can be safe with four. Okay. So, you, so Hurst or Givens? I like Hurst I like is. Davis. I mean, I hate saying this. Hurst is just going to make it easy because he's going to get hurt. He's been hurt so much. But <laughs> Hurst is a really good player. Like I, I think he'd be first man up as that three tech if he could be healthy. Uh, he's just never been able to do that in the NFL. He, he's got to go. I just like Givens too much. And Givens has been very consistent with just being a good football player. Yep, a good backup defensive lineman. Just yeah. solid. He come in and, and he'll make some plays where it's like, man, how come he doesn't play more? Mm -hmm. Right, like you ask yourself that question, and you know he's probably just not capable of playing more and doing those things consistently. But in a pinch, he can definitely give you those plays. So I got to keep Givens. And Givens isn't the biggest guy, but he's kind of the only guy that's built low to the ground, like you know that six one, three hundred pounder who could play a little one tech. He might be the only guy that can back up Javon Kinlaw on this roster because Hassan Ridgeway is not that, Maurice Hurst is not that. So Givens might have to make the roster. Right. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun with this position group because it's top heavy and it's deep now for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Nick Bosa, in my opinion, driving the bus on this San Francisco 49ers roster until further notice. Um, it's a fun group, fun. I can't wait for training camp. We're getting closer, and, and every day that passes, I, I start to realize how close we are. And, and talking about the the roster positions, talking about uh, the camp battles, get me excited, Croc. Will, will you be going to any training camp practices, even like as a fan or? I have oh, not yeah. scheduled anything yet. I got so much going on right now in my house uh, with my with my new house and all the construction going on right now that it's like it was the, it's been the last thing on my mind. But now I'm realizing, oh, crap, camp is coming up. And I just saw that um, the, the calendar of the, you know, the days that, that are just wide open. So I could just go jam down there one of those days for that and not worry about credentials or anything like that. So uh, I've got to hit something at training camp this year. Yeah, I, I plan on going. I believe it was the. Yep. The fifth and the sixth. They have a practice on a Friday and a Saturday. I plan on, I plan well, on Croc's being going. There. Croc's going. I'm going. Yeah, I plan on August fifth and sixth. Forty Nine ers training camp. Yeah, it's on. Let's go. Fifth and sixth. So if we can get the, I mean, those tickets, man, they they sell out fast. So I just gotta make sure I get on those. They're only like five bucks. But... Call up your boy Jed. <laughs> right. I used you know, to have the plug, man. I, I was plugged in on that. I was credentialed and everything. And uh, uh, that guy is gone now. He went to a different organization. So mm. I haven't even tried since then. I moved away to Arkansas. So I haven't even tried to get credentialed. Let's get put up in one of those suites and then we'll record the pod from a suite. Well, that's the thing. When, when you're credentialed, you have access to everywhere in that. So, you know, we could, you know, do our thing. We're at the practice, you know, whatever. And then you just kind of find an empty room and you record. And uh, I mean, those that's 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 where the money's at as far as, you know, the streaming and yeah. all that. Everyone loves that. So we'll just do it from the field. We could do it from the field. Just got to stay away from Kinlaw. Right. <laughs> all right. Good stuff. Uh, thanks, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers your first listen. Croc and I back Monday right here. Locked on 49ers.